Hello parents, welcome to the Kids Ministry Parent Info Meeting. This is going to be a short synopsis of some of the beginning stages and the beginning framework that we're using uh, for children in our K-5 through ministry gatherings. We're going to be going through different processes, different structures, things that uh, God is really leading us in as we begin to explore a new expression of church uh, for children as well. So the first thing I want to do is start out by sharing my role within this ministry. I am the K through five ministry architect. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Tyler Cook. And the K through five ministry architect is responsible for developing and implementing a ministry framework for children in grades K through five within the Phoenix Adventure Circle. This includes experimenting with different volunteer roles, safety policies, organizing systems, ministry rhythms, trainings, and other K through five ministry related matters. Basically, we needed somebody to step in and fill the gap of really building the initial framework of what we want to see uh, for a kid's ministry within in a a decentralized, uh, self-effusing, interdependent, and emergent ecosystem that we're trying to create uh, within the larger church here in our Phoenix church plant. And so I really felt inspired and called uh, by the Lord to begin to implement this system and begin uh, working with other people on determining what the best thing would be to do. And so the first thing I guess I really want to say is thank you. Uh, Thank you for trusting me in this process. Thank you for entrusting your children over to us on Sunday mornings. Uh, We really believe that the things that the Lord is embarking on with the greater church, really worldwide, but but just nailing down to what we're doing here in Phoenix uh, is going to be a really innovative and beautiful design and really going to be what we feel like meets the needs of this hour. And uh, this is really, really going to be necessary specifically for the younger generations coming up who are used to the world functioning in a unique way. And unfortunately, that a lot of times our older church paradigms haven't quite uh, fit the bill for. And so we're really exploring what this new expression of church is supposed to mean for your kiddos. And to really begin with uh, that, we're going to start out by discussing the innovation process. And this process is really important to what we're doing with the K through five ministry, because this is really our, our framework for how we're going about determining what works and what doesn't work for kids uh, in our ecosystem. And this is going to be a little bit of a different process than probably what most churches come up with. Really, it was a new process for me until I really started to learn it. Um, I've always been used to determining everything up front, trying to make the best possible product uh, as, as early as possible, figure out all the problems, everything um, up, up front before launching a ministry or a program. And, and this kind of actually turns that model on its head. So let's go in to describe the, the basics of this process. Here's our starting assumptions. Our starting assumptions is that we don't know what the best solution is. Oftentimes we think we do, but until we're kind of in the thick of it, we really can't discern exactly what the best solution is going to be. We may not even know what the right problems to tackle are. This is probably one of the biggest reasons why we can't figure out the best solution because oftentimes the problems that end up happening in a lot of different ministries and programs are hidden at the front. We think we know what we're what we're going up against, but then once we get into it, we find that there's a whole different list of problems that need solutions for them. And finally, we don't know what we don't know. Uh, every year is a new uh, kind of beginning culturally and um, y- with, with children in particular, the way that technology is just accelerating, it's a whole new uh, spectrum of things that we need to figure out, we need to understand. And so uh, really, we're just coming in with a place of humility saying, we really don't know what we don't know quite yet. Now, here's how it works with the innovation process. The first thing we do is we ideate. We develop a hypothesis, and that's kind of what I'll be presenting to you today. This is our beginning hypothesis of what we hope is going to work within this Phoenix church plant for the kids' ministry. We're not sure. I'm not sure by any means, uh, but you got to start somewhere. And so this was the the, the basic hypothesis that we chose to begin with. And then you build it. That's what I'm showing you right now. This is an MVP. MVP stands for minimum viable product. You see, instead of pouring all of our time and energy and resources into 
making something that we think is the best possible product, we are starting out with something minimal. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be testing that product in real life with, with the kids, seeing what works and what doesn't work. And that's really what the next process involves. This is our feedback loop. This is where we get to actually observe what is landing with your children, what isn't, what's effective, what's not. All of this is really important as we continue to experiment and discern really what God is doing with your kids in this day, in this hour. And really what we want to do then is we want to turn this cycle as many times as possible uh, in real life context to be, be able to figure out what's working, what isn't working. Um, when all we do is we stay in that kind of ethereal uh, 50,000 foot level kind of idea phase, uh, we miss a lot. And so what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to take the minimum viable product that we have, which I'm about to share with you guys, and we're going to put it out there and we're going to see how the children respond to it. We're to see what they like, what they don't like, what's effective. And we're going to continue to tweak and innovate this model until hopefully we come up with something that's that's pretty robust, that, that meets the needs of our kids. But we also need to realize that this innovation process really never stops. Uh, we will continue to innovate as much as we need to in order to meet the needs of the children, to make them uh, on-fire disciples for Jesus. All right, this brings me to wanting to discuss a little bit about the shape of our ministry. Uh, I'm going to be presenting two different shapes, and I'm going to be exploring really a new way that we're seeking to, to frame uh, a new structure that we're seeking to implement with the kids' ministry. This first one is called the centralized shape. This has been predominantly uh, the most common shape in children's ministry for for quite a while now. Um, and this is what it looks like. We're looking at the adult, as you can see right here at the top. Um, these parentheses are basically just age age ranges. So if you're, if you're wondering what those are for, uh, this is where the adult really has the primary responsibility for the totality of the kid's ministry. This is gonna look like the adult basically determining what the lesson plan is each week, being responsible for executing that lesson plan with the kids, telling them everything that they really need to do, sharing all the information, and really being in charge of every aspect of that kid's ministry. This is not a bad system. God has used this system. He's blessed this system. But one thing that we began to realize in um, kind of the whole Phoenix Church plant and a, a, a starting philosophy why we're, we're embracing a decentralized model is that we really started to notice the lack of participation happening in gatherings. And it's amazing as I've been working with kids in this short bit of time, the way that they are catching on and really expressing the same tension. They want to contribute. They want to be a part of this thing. And I believe they can be. We believe they can be. And so we want to explore a little bit of a different shape from the centralized shape. And this is what we're calling the decentralized shape. Now, as you can see, the difference just in the shape here, instead of it being more of a hierarchical uh, pyramid shape thing, we're looking at a circle. Um, and in this shape, we're seeing children that are of different ages, whether they're, you know, in our case, uh, starting at five years old, so kindergarten-ish through uh, fifth grade. We're seeing age groups all in between. They're being able to participate together. And not only that, we're also seeing people outside of that age group who are able to lend help and experience and be able to infuse uh, their own knowledge and expertise into this. Now, as you can see, there is an adult in this. The adult plays a very important role. I don't want to minimize the rules of adults. These are kids that we are dealing with. These are minors. They need to be trained up in righteousness. It is definitely our responsibility and something that we take very seriously to be doing that. But what I don't think needs to happen is for the adult to micromanage every aspect of the ministry. I think that that actually causes us to really stunt the growth of our children because we're just pouring in, pouring in, pouring in, but really not giving them any way to allow that information that they're gaining to be used and practiced in the real world. And so what we get is we get sort of a constipated Christian that's receiving a bunch of stuff, but isn't really able to use it, isn't able to really expand. And, and I found personally with kids and in my own life that the place where I really learn the most is when I'm able to put whatever I'm being taught into practice. And so we're really focusing on that. We're focusing on giving over responsibility, giving over some empowerment to our kids so that they can function in this ecosystem so that they can be seen as members of this ecosystem that aren't just receiving, but are also contributing. 
All right, this brings us to our gatherings. And this is kind of the place where we're starting to implement all of this. There's there's going to be more to the, the K-5 through ministry than just the gatherings, but this is really our focal point right now, Sunday mornings when we all come together as a children's ministry. And this is where we're really starting to embrace, rather than an adult-led gathering period, into kind of a co-created gathering where the adults, some youth, tweens, kids are all interacting together to really create an experience. Just to give you an idea, here are some of the roles that we are beginning to experiment with within these co-created gatherings. Now, not all of these are going to be able to be implemented every time. Uh, that would be a very long uh, gathering, but some always will be in place. Something like the conductor, the one who's kind of making sure that things are running smoothly, going from person to person. Each role is able to kind of work together. That person's kind of conducting all of that thing. We're also going to obviously have an adult assistant in there, somebody who is an adult that's able to supervise and just ensure everybody's being safe, our operating system is being followed, all of that. And I think another important part of this is that we will pretty much always have a, uh, let me find it here, an equipper. Uh, because the beginning of our times together in, in the Sunday gatherings is a fluid portion with adults. The kids are already getting a lot of these different components like worship and, and prayer and scripture verses and activations. We want to make sure that we are also really equipping our kids. They, they don't know what they don't know. And so we want to make sure that we are teaching and training them up so that they can continue to grow in that way. So this is just a little bit of a, an overview of some of the things that we're experimenting with. And please hear me as I was describing with the innovation process, I'm not sure if all of these will work or not. Uh, we're still working on really figuring out the best possible solution, and we'll just continue to experiment to see uh, what ends up working for us. Now, as I mentioned, uh, the texture of this meeting is going to be a combination of two things. Um, the kids are already receiving a lot of that fluid portion uh, experience in the fluid portion that happens before our kids gathering. Um, but we don't want to completely eliminate any fluid opportunities within the kids gathering as well. And so what we're doing is we're trying to figure out a way, and I'm not sure exactly how this will work yet, where we are combining both a structured component and a fluid component. Um, what I mean by structured is more of a, a pre-planned uh, type of, of gathering where there is specific things that we're trying to accomplish. The fluid component is going to involve a little bit more of really listening to the Holy Spirit in the moment and being willing to shift and embrace different things that the Holy Spirit's leading us in. We want to kind of combine both. We want to embrace the idea of preparing our kids and being prepared going into this, but we also want room for the Holy Spirit to move. So this is going to be one of those dynamics that we'll have to kind of tinker with over time and see what really works. Uh, but this is kind of what the meeting is going to encompass is both of those aspects. And what we're really seeking to do here is to get a true collaboration between children and adults. Like I said, I do not want to minimize the importance of adults within our kids' ministry. They are vital. Uh, they, they are necessary to what we're doing. But we are trying to step away from the type of ministry where the adult is always in charge and always controlling and always making sure that things are being done, you know, uh, according to whatever plan they prepared ahead of time. Uh, we're trying to figure out ways where we can introduce the kids to really take ownership in this thing. And so we're going to continue to kind of play with that uh, diverse tension of adults and kids working together to co-create a beautiful experience in our gatherings and really just in the ministry in general. We want to see multiplicity of people kind of stepping in of different age groups to really form what this ministry is meant to be. All right, now let me end with items that are in the hopper. You know, when I looked up hopper, because um, I've heard this term used a lot, it referred to like agriculture and things like that. I like to think of it more like paintball. When I played paintball, this little uh, black thing that you see on top of the paintball gun, that's called the hopper, and all of the paintballs go in that there and funnel down and, and go through. So this is what's in our hopper right now as a ministry, soon to come. First off, our child safety policy. Melissa Peters is working on this. Um, she has an amazing gifting for this. She's got um, a, a great background working on child safety policies within church contexts. Um, she, she has done quite a bit of work in this previously. And so we're really looking forward to what she is going to be presenting with our child safety policy. We also have an incentive strategy that Arlette is currently working on. We actually have a MVP, a minimum viable product for that, that we are beginning to test and try and we'll continue to iterate on. 
And then the last thing is I am going to be taking on a little bit more of the intentional training of what we're calling our youth core crew, which is those kids that are outside above the uh the grade five level, who really want to remain active in the kids' ministry and want to take on a little bit more of a leadership level. And then the apprentices, those are going to be those who are entering fifth grade or who are in fifth grade uh, that are looking kind of ahead to the future of, I'm about to be stepping out of this K through five ministry, but I still want to be learning about how I can bless the kids in this way uh, once I do step out of that. So they'll basically be youth core crew in training. And so I'm going to be taking some time to really figure out what the best uh, way to go about training and equipping these kids is going to be because they're going to play a pivotal role in what we are doing as a ministry. All right. So I had given this uh, live at one point. Obviously, uh, that's not the case right here. So we had questions and comments. But I do want to say, if you have any questions or any comments at any time, please feel free to reach out to me. It's really going to be uh, feedback that I get from parents, that I get from kids, that I get from our youth core crew. That's going to be really important in continuing to uh, iterate and, and find out the best thing that we can do for this children's ministry. So with that, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to listen to this. Uh, it really means a lot to me. That, that you guys are a part of this process, that you know what's happening. And I'm just really excited for what God has in store. Thanks.